gonna be able to make the language. What? I'm not gonna be able to make. Remember, I talked to you today this morning that I'm not gonna make that meeting, and I wanted to make sure that I read what we're doing. Part three. Yeah, it's called. Uh... I'm sorry. No, it's quite alright. It's called spiritual language. Spiritual awakening, yeah, part three, right? First step in the first article in part three. Okay. Sorry so about what, that. So what they're doing is... Glad to see you. I'm sorry I was late. I've never been to this club before and I got a little lost. Oh, well, we were going to spend the eight days. Huh? We were oh. spend the eight days. <laughs> Glad you made it. So what they're doing from Washington becomes back into the district area where they're going to turn around and say District 9. They will be given names geographically and maybe meet a man like when he comes out of prison and take him to his first meeting. The whole thing is for him to stay and take care of him for a week. This is my age group? And yeah, he said, well, yes, with the GSS. Oh. Well, why don't you... Uh well, I just wanted to introduce it to let them know what's coming up. Absolutely. And then if we could do like just before you start doing the medal, the diet. Sure. Okay, guys, okay. let's find our picture. We got the people uh, that come out to the Maryland. Maryland. You can do the. Uh, you can do the medallion. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Steve. I don't think Steve is here. that cake. Besides me, and so uh, 
I snagged her up and we started working some steps and, and um, she really went, went out these steps with, with everything that, that she had. And uh, she was coming over to my house and when we went through that fourth step and went through the fifth step and we went through all the steps. And she's been coming to Jim's meetings too and, and uh, because she's done the work, she has got her year and I want her to come here and get it. She decided, I decided that, you know, I would pick her for my sponsor, and I never called her, and I relapsed as soon as I got out of the village. Um, I was probably sober three months, the months I spent in the village. Um, so this time I decided to do it different, and um, I had a, what they call a temporary sponsor, uh -oh. and uh, <laughs> that wasn't working real well for me. Um, it was temporary, right? It was very <laughs> temporary. I mean, she told me to call her at a certain time, and if I didn't call her at that time, she wasn't going to talk to me, and it just didn't work out. And and one day I was at one of Bill's meetings, and um, I heard Janine's voice, and I was like, oh, my God, that was my sponsor from Miami. And, it, and you know, my hair on the back of my neck rose, and I was, it was just one of those um, God things, you know, I feel. And she really helped me quite a lot. Um, I worked the steps some... Um, didn't take a long time to work them, you guys. You know, you can go right through them if you really want to. And um, I thank her for that. And um, my year of sobriety has been great. I feel good. And uh, and with my higher power and Janine, I'm hopefully I'll have more years to come. Yes. Thank you, Lori. All right, now we have Dennis with one year. All right. Come on over. Congratulations, Dennis. Good job, buddy. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a wonderful year. Uh, it's a good chance to uh, clean house. And it's the longest I've been sober. Uh, I tried two months, about six years ago, and uh, I have to give two reasons. It was these rooms and my higher power. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. All right, now we have Jerry with one year. meeting and I needed another format in my program and the big book meeting was what I needed and uh, so when they asked me who was celebrating this month uh, one night I was like the only one that raised my hand and Marilyn wrote my name down so I didn't you know I thought this is an honor I've had a very uh, trying year um, and this is the only time I've ever been sober my whole life uh, so I'm starting at 49 years old a whole new life over um, and I, mir miracles have happened this, this week. I've got reunited with my children. Oh, wow. uh, in the last few days, I've got a house. <laughs> I have, I was moving today, I've got 54 drunks in my phone, and not one of them could help me today. You know? And I said, what's up with that? I don't know, but, <laughs> but, uh, and I couldn't find a damn drunk in this whole town to help me move today, but you know, that's okay. I hope they were at meetings. Um, but it's been an awesome, awesome year, and a lot of things have happened, and uh, I have a God that I can trust, and uh, I have these rooms and the people in these rooms that I count on for my support, and uh, it's just been an awesome experience so far, and it's just the beginning of my journey, and uh, thank you. One 
Let me have that. Oh, you may. You want to say a few words for Warren's behalf? This, uh, my name is Jim. I'm not a I guess. Uh, Sky Warren is an unusual fellow. Um, he calls me just about every day. I'll never told him to do that, but he seems to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's sweet with Ben, but he knows. <laughs> Warren is a, is, is a guy who's, when you, if you were to know him, if you'd meet him, you'd be amazed by him. He's a, he's a very, very, very nice guy. And you know that being nice is not a pose, not an act that he puts on us. It's the way Warren is. He's, a, he's in, South, in uh, Denver now, right? San Francisco. Oh, in San Francisco, yeah, so he's out of town. But I've enjoyed Warren. I, I don't know if he comes back or he will be back. I'm I'm be glad to see him when he gets back. And he's he's been a very good friend too uh, for Linda here. And so uh, I have a lot of respect for this guy. And he's working a good program. And he's got his first year. So can can you mail this off to him, please? I'll oh, we'll just hold it for you. And thanks a lot for that. Did you want to say something for Warren? Warren is um, a big fan of this band called Fish. I don't know if anyone has heard of it. So, um, so he feels that he's fit now to go to these concerts. So he's in San Francisco following his uh, high power. <laughs> Is there anyone else celebrating this month that didn't 
um, get on the list that would like to um, celebrate with us tonight? Okay, great. Jim, take it away. All right, thank you, Marilyn. You're going to have to see her again, too. It's not so difficult. It's a beautiful lady. By the way, uh, what was the name of that guy who wasn't here? Matt. <laughs> well, we, did we send the A police after him? Yeah. Nobody knows him. Nobody says. No, we don't. We don't know where he is. Huh? I think I know. He'll get a warrant out for his arrest. All right. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy cow! Look at that. What are up? Let's go back to page ninety. We've got some more work we can do here. We're going to the second full paragraph about halfway down the page. Page, what did I say? Oh boy, senior moment. 99. 99. 99. Halfway down the page. If there be divorce or separation, there should be no undue haste for the couple to get together. The man should be sure of his recovery. The wife should fully understand his new way of life. Now, I, when I read that, and I still wonder what the heck Bill meant here. Let's see, they're separated or divorced. Now, how does he go about explaining his new way of life? <clears throat> I hope that that, I guess that can work once in a while. If their old relationship is to be resumed, it must be on a better basis since the former did not work. Well, that's doggone good advice. You know, when, when I read that, I remember what the basics of all this stuff turn out to be. If, if when, we, when we work our fourth and fifth step, what happens? We find out what didn't work. Find out what didn't work. There, that fourth step is not an indictment of us. It's a search for the truth about what didn't work. We need to find out what is wrong with us, of course, because these are things that we can't do anything about ourselves in spite of what New Age AA talks about, working on your defects. How the hell do you work on something that you have no power over? I never figured that one out. But we find out what's wrong with us, so we're going to have to take to God to ask him for help. But it's very important to remember that when we do our inventory, we find out what did not work. And this is follow-on, isn't it, from the third step. Remember in the third step what we, what we discovered. That we've been trying to play God. That all of our troubles arose from our selfish and self-centered conduct from decisions based on self and that we had been living our lives based on self-will. We were power driven and we found out that that did not work. And so when we got to the third step we saw that playing God didn't work and that we're going to have to change. And that's when we made the decision to turn our life and our will over to the care of God, as, he, as we understood it. So now again, when we get into our fourth and fifth steps, we're finding out what didn't work. Now here's a, it's such a simple formula. We stop doing what didn't work. And we start doing what will work. And one of the most important things that a sponsor can do is to teach his or her sponsees what will work. And the best way we teach that is to show by our actions. We take the third step prayer to heart. We ask God there to make us an example of his power working in our lives so that we can be helpful to others. In other words, that we be the example rather than the mouthpiece. We're the, we're the example of God's power rather than contenting ourselves to babble off a few pat phrases and, and claim that we've got great recovery. Great recovery always, always results in spiritual action. The action of following these principles in all of our affairs. And so when we 
when we when we want to teach somebody else how what actions do you take how do you stop doing what you were doing that didn't work and what are you going to substitute that with have we got a sufficient substitute of course we have we call it the 12 steps and so when we understand that we understand the meaning of this phrase that we're going to stop doing what didn't work and start doing what will work and when we do that our whole life changes automatically this means a new attitude and spirit all around sometimes it is to the best interest of all concerned that a couple remains apart obviously no rule can be laid down. Let the alcoholic continue his program day by day. When the time, here's the rule now. And this is sometimes is the hardest part to follow. When the time for living together has come, it will be apparent to both parties. And you know, one of the major mistakes is made by people who come in here new, who have uh, a uh, have had a, a long-term relationship or a marriage, especially if they're children, that there's a great tendency to want to recreate that immediately, to force it back together. And it's a, always, always a mistake. Because there will come a time where we'll, we'll know that it's, that it's time to do that. We let God have his way with us in these things. We don't try to force them anymore. Take your third step prayer to heart. God, I offer myself to thee to do with me and to build with me as thou wilt. That is an unconditional offer. And when we remember that and when we let God have his will with us, then things work. It is when we try to force stuff to make it work. That's when things go wrong. And is this ever especially true with relationships? The people who are supposed to be together, God will bring together. That's all we have to know. And it'll be in his time and not ours. And it'll be when we're ready and the other person is ready. And then it'll happen. And we can carry that across the board in everything that we do. Just relax. Let God have his way with us. That's all we have to do. It's so bloody simple. And when we do that, things work. The more we fight and fuss and try to have our own way, the worse they get. That's what we always did before. We stopped doing that. We stopped doing the things that didn't work. Let no alcoholic say he cannot recover unless he has his family back. This just isn't so. In some cases, the wife will never come back for one reason or another. Gee, maybe she found some guy out there who was sober and had a lot of money. <laughs> Remind the prospect that his recovery is not dependent upon people. There's the same theme all over again, isn't it? His recovery, her recovery is not dependent upon people. People have no power to get us sober. Every time we hear the three pertinent ideas, we got to remember what it's telling us. No human power. The human solutionists are all over the place now, and somehow or another they've got it in their heads that they've got the power to get us sober. I guess they have to keep believing that because they've gone to school for so long to learn how to do it. But the truth of the matter is that no human power ever has worked, and it's very unlikely it ever will work. And so dependency upon people is not going to work. Here's what it tells us, top of page 100. Recovery, the, the theme here is recovery. It is dependent upon his relationship with God. We have seen men get well whose families have not returned at all. We've seen others slip when the family came back too soon. There's one thing that we need to do if we're new, guys, and this has become painfully obvious with a couple of people I'm trying to work with right now. That when they are diverted from their program, when they are distracted 
from the things they need to do by the demands of other people or by their own unwillingness to say, no, hold off, go slow. They don't make it. Work in this program requires an awful lot of concentration and stick to it in this. And, to, and to do the steps correctly, we don't waste time with them. We get through them, we get them done. And when people are being diverted and, and uh, distracted from that by the demands of others, it can be very, very disastrous for, the, for that person. The, the family that goes together too soon can often be fatal for the alcoholic because there's there's just too much distraction there, too much new pressure all at once can't be handled. Let God decide these things. It's so simple. And if we are willing and open to His power, we will receive it. See, that's the key always, isn't it? Big Book tells us that the right answers will come if we want them which means precisely that we have stopped trying to dictate the answers to God and we're willing to accept the answer, whatever it may be. And when we meditate, we, we tell them that. Please show me what you want me to do and I will accept the answer no matter what it may be. And we better mean it because that's the way it works. We open ourselves up, we stay open, and we'll get the right answers. This next sentence on page 100 is a sentence which contains within itself the entire concept of sponsorship. The big book nowhere uses the word sponsor. It talks about spiritual advisor and so forth. It talks about protégés. But here in one sentence it tells us everything we need to know about sponsorship in its in it, in its in its most concise form as a spiritual principle. Both you and the new man must walk day by day in the path of spiritual progress. Two people walking day by day, each growing spiritually. Now if one is growing spiritually at the expense of the other, it will never work. If one is managing to keep themselves sober at the expense of the other, it will never work. The sponsorship of ego, ego of sponsorship is one of the most deadly things that floats around these rooms. There are many people who, who claim to be sponsors who are doing nothing but put notches in their belts. And it's a damn shame. There can be no ego in sponsorship. There has to be gratitude. If somebody asks me for help, I say, thank you, God, another opportunity. And I say, thank you to the person. You've honored me with your trust. And I learned that if I don't get my ego out of the way, if I don't understand that the opportunity to, to work with somebody to be helpful to them is God-given, and that I was given the grace to be able to do it, and now I'm given the opportunity to do it. This doesn't make me any damned hero. This just happens to be the way it really is. When we approach sponsorship in that light, then we know exactly what we need to do. We're to be on, the, on a spiritual path, growing spiritually, right along with the person we're trying to help. And when that happens, then you have a whole new ballgame. That's when all the magic starts to take place. That's when all the miracles start to happen. This program was never, never based on some kind of group action. It is not based upon a whole bunch of people ganging up on one person. It is not based upon the idea of encounter groups or any of the other foolishness and nonsense that we have foisted off on us these days. We get together precisely because we support each other in working the program. And if we're not working the program, the meeting's no damn use to anybody. We sit around and do Problems Anonymous all day long, and I bet you if you went to 10 meetings in this area right now today and in the next week, you would find nine of them were Problems Anonymous. 
because we've got this cockamamie idea that somehow or another if we go to meetings and spill our guts all over the room and we can walk out feeling good and everybody else is suffering we don't care because they told us that's what we're supposed to do ridiculous you see that belongs in the sanctity of the sponsorship sponsee relationship that's where we take care of those things and a good sponsor is going to say, yeah, 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 I hear all you're saying, but let's look at a solution and let's do it now. Because there's always a solution to these things. And the solution is not sit and bitch, moan and complain and mule and gripe and bitch about them. Figure out what the hell's going on, what's wrong, and then let's find a solution. Because the solution is always there, you know. Let's find out what the problem is and solve the problem with God's help. And when we do that, boy, things just change, everything changes. Both you and the new man must walk day by day in the path of spiritual progress. If we remember that, we know exactly what we need to do to be helpful to others. Next week, we'll start out with that paragraph on page 100. Let's welcome Marilyn back up here to give out chips. But um, there are positions that need to be filled, and if people could stay afterwards, especially if you feel led to do this. Um, a helper for Terry that is going to make the coffee, but a helper for him, a purchasing agent, preferably with a car and a Costco card, and, <laughs> and cleanup crew. So we need people to fill these positions so if you could stay afterwards, we need to uh, implement that immediately. Anyway. My name is Marilyn, I'm an alcoholic, and I'm here to do the chips. And I think it's really um, a nice coincidence, or God incidence, or whatever. Oh, thank you so much. You are so very helpful by your work. Um, that I, I'm doing the chips tonight on an anniversary night, because um, I picked up my white chip this time um, on an anniversary night. When I picked up my white chip, which is, um, I looked at it like I was going to try it. Um, somebody who picked up a medallion who had known me from when I was in before said, Marilyn, you're going to celebrate with me next year on your anniversary. And I said, do you really think I'm going to stay sober a whole year? And he said, yeah. And I was like, wow, not me, man, you know. <laughs> but thank God. Um, God had other plans and it and it really did come true. So but it all starts with the white chip. Because you can't pick up women valued. And as you start. <laughs> so anyway, the uh, white chip is a sign of surrender. Would anyone like to try this way of life, start this way of life? Pick up a white chip. Uh, come on. After all that. Come on, you new guys, get up here. Listen, it is all white to pick up a white chip tonight. All right. After three really, really long months, <laughs> you have earned a red chip. And the reason that they're red is because you better have read the big book by the time you get this chip. If you want to be happy, joyous, and free, has anyone earned a red chip tonight? All right, be that way. <laughs> then after six months, or the day before six months, you have, <laughs> you have earned a blue chip, and it's blue, because if you're blue by the time you got to six what months, color is that? it's blue. Oh, it's blue. If you're blue by the time you got to six months, it's probably because you didn't do the steps. So it's a little reminder. But anyway, has anyone earned 90 days or 89 and a half days blue chip tonight? <laughs> oh, Donna!
Good That's going, Daddy. Daddy. Daddy did her steps by six months. That's why she's smiling. All right, now after nine months, you have earned one of Jim's famous um, chips, which were created in his laboratory when he melted out of Budweiser cans, made them as these little chips and put Bill and Bob on them and said, has anyone earned a nine-month medallion tonight? Okay, great. Now, we're, we're already planning our next party. We just ended this one. We're planning in June. Who's celebrating the month of June for our whoopee party? My Oh, it might just be the Mania show, but then Jerry proved that that's not true, right? Okay, anybody else? Dominic, you celebrating in June? Yeah! All right, Dominic's got more titles in this group than anybody, and he's got two years. Anybody else celebrating in June? Okay, be here June 28th for our Whoopi party, but... You gotta come next week too. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, by the way, Jim, you did a really good. It was very interesting. <laughs> you did a really good job. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I can't imagine why half you guys weren't sticking up chips and I was getting a hug. Oh. <laughs> you must be blind. Yep, no blinders to it. Okay. I guess uh, we got any announcements to go to the All right, anyway, let's close me. Will you people please come, please come? Please come. Please come. Please come. Let this circle represent the unity of our fellowship. Let's have a moment of silence for those who are still suffering. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. And in the stairway group, we don't say anything after we say amen. Thank you, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you all so much for being here. See you next week. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.
like the format. It was a lot different than what I've been going to. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed it. So I'll probably see you every Saturday if that's what you're doing. It. I got my boys back in my life. Wow, that's delicious. Yeah, thank you, Jess. Thank you, buddy. You're good, man.